Hi students, Assalamualaikum and greetings to everyone. Welcome to the first chapter of this MKT 420 Principles of Marketing. In this first chapter, we are going to learn on marketing, which is creating customer value and engagement. So I hope you have downloaded the slides that I have put on your you future so that you'll be able to refer to the slides as I go through the video with you. Now let's first look at the learning objectives of this chapter. First, we are going to learn on marketing and outline the steps in the marketing process. And secondly, I'm going to explain to you the importance of understanding the marketplace and customers and identify the five core marketplace concepts. Number three, I'm going to um, let you know about the key elements of a customer-driven marketing strategy and discuss the marketing management orientations that guide marketing strategy. Learning objective number four, later on, I'm also going to discuss with you the customer relationship management and identify the strategy for creating value for customers and capturing value from customers in return. And lastly, number five, I'm going to describe with you the major trends and also the forces that are changing the market landscape in this age of relationship. Okay, basically in the new era of millennial and how does this marketing change the whole landscape. So let's go to the first learning objective, which is to define marketing. Okay, so what is actually marketing before you come to this particular video? All right, what comes to your mind when you heard the word marketing? Is it about promotion? Okay, do you think advertising is about marketing? All right, or uh, is it about sale? Uh, about um, some advertisement discounts, all right? Yes, basically those are part of marketing, okay? But uh, a good definition of marketing is that whereby it is actually a process by which companies create value for the customers, okay? And then they build a strong relationship, okay, with the customers in order to capture value from customers in return. Here, what it means is that you create something Okay, the customer would feel that, okay, when I buy things from this particular company or a product that I buy from this company will give value to me, okay? And other than having a good value, okay, the company also have a good relationship in the way that you make people feel welcome, okay? You feel that you are always... Um, gonna be a priority for this particular company or business that you later on capture value okay to the organization in return right so um actually marketing is all around us okay in good old traditional forms and also in a host of new forms all right so the traditional way is that you will see advertisement in the newspaper all right or you go to a shop and there will be a personal seller or personal no personal seller um what they call marketing assistant okay or sales promoter will come and approach you and ask what do you want to buy okay or how, how can they help you or they might also suggest you on how or what are the things that you should buy okay they used to be in the traditional form while the new forms include the website and also mobile phones apps right this include also those in the videos right and also online social media which is totally blooming okay um, if you watch um, Emily in Paris, okay, I think that particular um, series is actually so uh, popular in Netflix nowadays. So that is actually a very good marketing series, okay, in a way that, um, not a marketing series meaning to say I want to market that series. No, what I mean here is that when you watch Emily in Paris, you will learn about marketing, okay, and how she actually do marketing in this new era of millennial. Okay, whereby everything is about social influencers, all right? And people will always engage the social media influencer because people nowadays are always exposed to their social media, okay? And whatever they see on their phone screen, those are the things that they feel that they also need it. They also want to buy those things, all right? Now, let's move on to the second learning objective, which is to explain the importance of understanding this marketplace and customers and also identify the five core marketplace concepts. 
Now let's first look at on understanding the marketplace. You need to understand your customer needs. Okay, so what are the needs? Needs are actually states of felt deprivation, meaning to say you can't live without it. All right, if you need something, you must have it. Okay, I think or I bet you have always listened or heard the word must buy, must have kind of thing. So that is actually creating the needs. Okay, while well, wants are actually the form of human needs that take us, they are shaped by culture and individual personality. So wants are actually what you actually desire to have, what you feel like wanted to have it. Okay, it is not something that you need whereby um, if you don't have it, then you will die or you can't live without it. But wants are mostly things that are related to uh, products or services that makes you feel more comfortable, okay, that are actually shaped by the culture or even your own personality. While demands are actually human ones that are backed up by the buying power. Meaning to say, if you have the needs and you also have the ones, then you are qualified as a demand, okay, which you are back with this buying power. Buying power meaning to say you have the authority to buy, you also have the money to buy the product. Okay, look at an example of this particular picture. All right, so um, this is uh, the CEO of Target. I think you know Target. Target is actually one of the largest uh, superstore, okay, in the States, right? So this um, energetic Target CEO, Brian Cornell, makes regular unannounced visit to the Target stores, okay, accompanied by the local moms and also loyal Target shoppers. This is to get closer to the customer, all right, so that he knows who are his customers. And then um, he can be able, he will be able to uh, make himself or customers closer to him, all right, in one way is that he could be the face of the Target. Okay. Next, uh, when you talk about, again, understanding the marketplace and also customer needs, you're talking about market offerings. Market offerings are some combination of products, services, information, or experiences offered to a market to satisfy a need or one. Okay, that means market offerings are products, basically, that are available for customer to purchase. All right. Well, when you talk about marketing myopia, it is all focusing only on existing ones and losing sight of underlying consumer needs. Meaning to say, when you have this marketing myopia, you only just focus on what people already want. Okay. But nowadays, we don't do this marketing myopia because we, as the marketers, all right, or organization, they wanted to see what else customer would like to have. What are the needs of the customer? Uh, a very good example is when you go to Amazon.com. Okay, this is a uh, way by um, Amazon can actually suggest what are the products that you would need. Okay, uh, I think in Shopee also you'll be able to see that um, products that are actually. Uh, recommended for you so that kind of recommended thing is actually putting the needs of customers beyond what customer actually need meaning to say they can actually predict what you need not only just focusing on whatever that you demanded okay so that is actually a customer focus mission okay uh, an example here is that the buffalo wild wings mission is to provide a total ethic and social environment that fills the sports fan experience through in-store and online engagement okay so they want to create a very good space okay this is the market offering which make their experiences feel much more welcome okay next um, we also need to understand about exchange yeah, in this marketplace and also customer needs, whereby exchange is actually the act of obtaining a desired object or product yeah, from someone by offering something in return. So when exchange takes place, that means you are actually doing selling and buying. Okay, so um, the medium of exchange, of course, you use money, right? So when you want to have something that you desire, Okay, what that you need or you want, you will actually um, offer to the customers what you want from the customer is their money. And customer, what they want from you as a seller is the product. 
Okay, so marketing action can uh, try to create, maintain, and also grow desirable exchange relationship. Meaning to say, you want the customer to always buy from you, and also you want to always sell your product to that customers. And of course, you want to grow your customers. Okay. Uh, market. Now we talk about the market. Market is actually a set of actual and potential buyers. Yeah. So market is actually people. Okay, where people they actually are the buyer or this market also can be considered as people who potentially be the one who buy your product so that is what we call the potential buyers so uh, consumers market when they search for products okay they interact with the companies to obtain information and they make purchases okay so these are the consumer markets Okay, um, let's look at this figure 1.2, a modern marketing system. Okay, in this particular figure, you will have the suppliers, okay, company, competitors, marketing intermediaries, and the final consumers. This is the major environmental forces, all right, where it shows the main elements in a marketing system, okay, where it involves serving a market to the final consumers, okay. You are here, you are in this company. Okay, in a company, you will need suppliers to supply raw materials, ingredients, equipments for you to produce the product. Okay, and you will need marketing intermediaries, that means the channel members, okay, or other parties to help you to sell your product to the final consumer. If you don't use marketing intermediaries, you might want to also use your own channel. That means you will sell directly to your final consumers. So this is actually growing rapidly because nowadays, because of the online platform, okay, companies can sell directly to the consumer. They don't need supermarkets. They don't need hypermarkets or um, uh, wholesaler to help to sell their product to the final consumer because nowadays company can sell directly to the final consumer using their online platform okay and also you have to remember you are not the only seller so that is when competitors came to this particular environment forces which by whereby the competitors will also sell similar products like what you are selling so now you need to compete with these competitors because consumers they will not buy everything that pe the the sellers will sell they will actually buy things that they prefer that they will love to have and perhaps some of the customers are very loyal to certain company okay because of some advantages or some uniqueness that the company offer on their products right so this particular major forces we were going to learn throughout this particular semesters okay so don't worry about that so before we move on to the third learning objective, if you have any questions, please do not forget to write your questions in the comment chat uh, box below or chat with me in Telegram. Yeah? So if you have no questions, then we will proceed with learning objective number three, which is to identify the key elements of a customer-driven marketing strategy and discuss the marketing management orientation that guide the marketing strategy. Now, first thing first, we will look at about designing a customer value-driven marketing strategy. First, marketing. You have known just now in the first learning objective I have explained to you. Now, management. So when management comes into marketing, it is the art and science of choosing target markets and building profitable relationship with them. Okay, so here you want to see or you want to find out who are your customers okay by looking at that what we call the target market target market is actually the potential customers okay why do you call them these are your potential customers these are the people that most likely will purchase your product or will use your product so this is target market okay and you also want to, to know how can we best serve this target market okay by looking at what value proposition that we will create for them Okay, so when you talk about value proposition, okay, a brand's value proposition, it is the set of benefits or values it promises to deliver to customers to satisfy their needs. Okay, um, take a good example of this um, Hyatt Regency, okay, where the brand declares that sometimes okay, it's good not to be home, okay, 
in its advertisement, ads is advertisement, yeah, highlights the joy of business travel and staying at Hyatt Regency Hotel. Meaning to say, um, they wanted to show the value of their hotel rooms, okay, or their, yeah, the place that you will have to stay if you go out for a business uh, meeting or traveling, okay, uh, is actually as uh, better than, or as good as, or even better than you staying at home. Okay, so that is how they create a value whereby they promise or they tell the customer that even though you are outside your home, okay, even though you have to travel somewhere else, you will feel comfortable or more comfortable, all right, in the Hyatt Regency Hotel, all right. So let's look at this particular diagram, yeah, where this is actually an evolution of how the customer value driven marketing strategy is being formed from the production concept to product concept, selling concept, marketing concept, and to the societal marketing concept. Now, in the production concept, what the organization or the seller will think is about their internal capabilities because what they do best is to produce the product that they can produce which is based on their internal resources okay based on their expertise so what they do is that they know how to produce that particular product they are good at it so they focus on the production of that product and what they uh, care is about the quality of the product and keep on selling it to all customers and assuming that everybody will actually purchase the product okay so that is in production concept where focusing is on the internal resources internal capabilities next they move on to the product concept product concept is focusing on the product itself because they believe that this is a best seller product so what we should do is actually we focus by selling or concept of making sure that people have uh, the product in every house so everybody will actually have the product okay so they wanted to make sure that you create the best product for that particular item okay the example that is given in your uh, textbook is about the mouse trap okay so talking about the mouse trap so in product concept okay you will believe that i should make a very very good mouse trap so that there will be no more mouse in the house okay for the consumers so uh, you focus on uh, the technology or uh, the design the um, i don't know everything about that particular mouse trap okay without thinking of what else the customer would like to have that is when marketing my PR comes into that this particular product concept which you always believe that people will always want to have the mouse trap Okay, but you never thought of, let's say, customer perhaps do not want to just have a mouse trap. Okay, because perhaps they don't want to see that mouse in the trap. Perhaps they just want to make sure that there is no uh, mouse at all. Perhaps they would like to have some uh, pest control kind of chemical spray. Okay, or they want to have uh, uh, another form of other than the mouse trap itself. Okay. So like uh, artificial cats, okay, or what else will make mouse go away, okay? Oh, you will have to think about all those things, okay? If you are doing product concept, you don't have to bother about other things that people want. What you believe is that I produce this particular mouse trap and it actually fits the purpose of killing or catching the mouse but it doesn't really solve the problem whereby you know mouse they keep on breeding they keep on coming okay so in the end that product concept is may not be useful anymore all right so next moving on to the selling concept and also marketing concept let me show you here okay so in this particular uh, figure 1.3 it shows how selling concept are actually different from the marketing concept now selling concept starting point is from the factory what you believe is that I have product, the existing one, I keep on selling and promoting it, and in the end, I will get profit through the sales volume. Okay, on the other hand, the marketing concept, the starting from the starting point is from the market, which is potential customer, buyers. Okay, by focusing on what do this customer needs, okay, what do they want to have? Then you integrate your marketing, your production your promotion your pricing and your distribution of the product okay by earning the profit through customer satisfaction 
Okay, so selling concept, you are talking about just selling it, right? But marketing concept is by looking into customer satisfaction. And from the customer satisfaction, you will earn the profit because you will get people to buy your product when they are satisfied with your product. Okay, and moving on to the societal marketing. Okay, societal marketing is where by the company's marketing decision are considering consumer wants, company's requirement, and also consumer's long-run interest and society's long-run interest, which it consists of three parties here. Not only just the company to earn the profit, not only just the consumer to fulfill their needs and satisfaction, but also the society as a whole human welfare. Okay? So, um, moving on, all right? To the marketing mix okay marketing mix is a comprises of a set of tools known as the four piece okay so when i mention four piece you should be able to remember let me see where's my hand okay four piece okay four piece are product price promotion and also place so when i said integrated marketing it means these four piece are being integrated a comprehensive plan that communicates and delivers intended value now, moving on to the fourth learning objective, okay? So, in this learning objective, I'm going to discuss with you the customer relationship management, okay? And identify strategies for creating value for the consumers or the customers, okay? And capturing values from customers in return, okay? So, um, first, let's us look at what is actually, actually customer relationship management, okay? So, you know when you're in a relationship, okay? What do you do? Okay, now when you talk about the customer relationship, all right? So it is actually the overall process of building and maintaining profitable customer relationship by delivering superior customer value and satisfaction. Okay. Now um, the relationship blocks, okay, is when you have this customer perceived value and customer satisfaction. Okay. Customer perceived value is the difference between total customer perceived benefits and also the customer cost. That means, how much do I pay for a product and how much do I think or what is the worth of the product for the amount that I have to pay for the product that I bought. Okay, that is customer perceived value. Like for example, if you see a nasi lemak, a plate of nasi lemak for example, which is a 10 ringgit per plate. Okay, what will be your perceived value on a plate of nasi lemak at 10 ringgit? The cost that you have to pay for 10 ringgit and to get a plate of nasi lemak. So that difference, okay, is what they call this particular customer perceived value. Okay, so the customer satisfaction, on the other hand, is actually the extent to which that particular perceived performance matches the buyer's expectation. So with the 10 ringgit, I expect Okay, the nasi lemak will be having, of course, the rice, sambal, not only just sambal bilis, you also want sambal kerang, sambal sotong, sambal udang, okay, sambal petai and whatsoever sambal, okay, uh, let's say a piece of chicken, fried chicken or roasted chicken, okay, uh, of course, cucumber, you want peanuts, okay, what else, ayam rendang, daging rendang, Okay, so that will be what is your expectation for 10 ringgit that you pay for nasi lemak. As compared to, let's say you pay 10 ringgit and what you get in your plate of nasi lemak is just nasi, sambal bilis and three pieces of cucumber. Okay, so will you be satisfied with that 10 ringgit that you pay or not? Of course, no, isn't it? Okay, so there is actually the two blocks here. Now, you don't want this to happen. So that's when you must make sure that whatever their customer perceive, okay, is what they will get. All right, that means it matches the buyer's expectation. Now, this is a very good example, okay, on customer satisfaction by the LL Bean, okay. Customer service champion, the LL Bean was founded on a philosophy of complete customer satisfaction. Okay, so as a founder, the Lennon Leon would be put it, I do not consider a sale complete until the goods are worn out and the customers, okay, or the customer is still satisfied. 
Okay, that means the warranty, not the silver warranty, the guarantee of people buying the product. It's not just um, you just get the product and that's it. But it is about satisfaction. Okay, so to them, custom the, the sale, okay, the, the transaction is only complete when customers are satisfied. Okay, and the customers have actually worn out using the product because, you know, the product, they have some life span isn't it so it actually achieve or have uh, passed that particular life span of the product and customer are still satisfied with that particular product okay where they have this uh, normally this is what they call the customer's policy okay the policy where i do not consider a sale complete until goods are worn out and customer still satisfied we will thank anyone to return goods that are not perfectly satisfactory that means that meaning that means they appreciate if let's say you don't like our product you return it back to us okay so that is a customer warranty there okay and should the person reading this notice know of anyone who is not satisfied with our goods i will consider it a favor to be notified they even tell you if let's say you know a friend that don't like our product tell us okay so that we can reach to that particular friend of yours okay and above all things we wish to avoid having any dissatisfied customer okay so the moment you read this right you feel that you have the confidence buying from this particular company right or not okay next one is the customer engagement marketing okay when talking about customer engagement marketing you fosters directs and that continuous customer involvement in shaping brand conversations experiences and also community many companies nowadays do this customer engagement marketing because um, they want to get customer to be involved okay in their brand conversation okay in telling other people okay about their experiences and also the whole community using that particular product a good example here okay in engaging consumers or customers life is good okay you see this symbol life is good okay which is it starts with a deeply felt engagement worthy sense of purpose by spreading the power of optimism yeah life is actually good okay by doing this as one of their marketing strategy okay it creates online and social media tools that let people engage and help the co-author on the brand story so what you need to do now is actually go to google and find out what actually this company do okay next uh consumer generated marketing okay so when consumer generated marketing what does it mean it's actually where brand exchanges created by consumers themselves okay this is when you follow or you listen to your customer okay from there you generate your four piece okay where consumers here are playing an increasing role in shaping your brand experiences now um let's take a very good example of this mountain dew i think you know the drink right not no this isn't a my rage okay baja blast is in the bottles and cans for the summer of baja only all right so it's finally here so consumer generated marketing okay like in this mountain dew they stir up user generated content to create bars around a limited time reintroduction of its iconic baja blast drink okay of course we don't have this in malaysia like what we have is just mountain dew right not okay so this has boosted okay the online chatter by 170 percent okay you see the engagement here all right so by uh putting this on your website okay or on your uh, social media this is, should be in the uh, twitter i guess okay so you'll be able to get customer to respond to your advertisement okay it is how actually customer change okay change how you actually project the product to the whole market next one is partnership or partner relationship management okay so here it involves working closely with the partners and also um, not just necessary inside your organization okay but also outside the company to jointly bring greater value to the customers nowadays um you're not only talking about if you are in the customer service 
line yeah or you you are the one who are the frontliners okay you are not the only one in the organization that will be facing customer now everybody in the organization are actually exposed to each and every customers and they can be judged okay by the customer about the product or the brand that you are selling okay okay so this is what it means by it is important that everybody in organization will take care of the customer okay so you have a good relationship not only just in your department marketing department but also with the production department okay with the uh, uh finance department with the human resource department okay and also outside the company like your suppliers your distributors or even your competitors okay to jointly bring a greater value to the customers next customer lifetime value okay this is the value of entire stream of purchases that the customer would make over a lifetime of patronage patronage is when you actually have a good experience yeah so you want to create that um the moment people buy it or the moment people go to your shop go to the services that you offer they will actually value it for the rest of their life okay so a good example here in disneyland yeah they have this policy okay customer policy rule number one according to the uh ceo i guess this one Stu leonard rule number one customer is always right and rule number two if the customer is ever wrong refer to rule number one okay or reread rule number one that means customer is always right customer will never be wrong all right so from here people who go there who go to disneyland will have their lifetime experience okay that they will always think that that's why they call disneyland okay it is where um your fantasy comes into reality okay and they keep customer coming back to disneyland not only just for once they will keep on wanting to go again and again right you never heard people going to Disneyland and I never want to go to Disneyland anymore. No. Okay, every time people go to Disneyland, they will always say, I want to go to Disneyland again and again and again. Okay. Next one is when you talk about the share of customer. Okay, share of customer is actually the portion of the customers purchasing that a company gets in its product categories. So share of customer, typically known as market share. Okay, this is whereby you have to remember yeah you are not the only seller remember just now you have competitors like i told you okay so these competitors are competing with you so you are uh, have you have to share your market meaning to say customer if you want to buy burger for example they can only they can buy from mcdonald's they can buy from kfc they can buy from king's burger okay so um these three companies for example they have to share the customer sometimes you feel like eating burger king so you go to burger king okay next week you feel like eating burger but you may not want to go to burger king perhaps you want to go to kfc okay so this is a portion of customers purchasing okay the product okay from different companies that you have to share no matter what you can't stop people from going to other shop isn't it all right so that is what it means by the share of customer or the market share next is customer equity okay customer equity is actually the total combined customer lifetime values of all of the company's customer so basically it is actually uh, counted as uh, how many customers are there and how much value do they bring to the company meaning profit that they bring to the company now this is a very good figure yeah by looking at how customer relationship are being grouped okay this is how you see their value they are strangers butterflies true friends and barnacles um looking at the loyalty and also potential profitability as it goes up here profitability is going to be higher and as it goes to the right side here the loyalty will be longer in long term okay you don't want to have strangers your customer couldn't be strangers because strangers mean they are having low profitability and it is for short term they show low potential in your profitability not really profitable at all right and they are not even loyal to you these are strangers you don't want them you also don't want binacles you know binacles they are like um 
uh, not symbiosis, uh, another one. I forgot what is the term called. You know, symbiosis means you help each other, right? But binacles, just like binacles, you know binacles, those are the, uh, you know, when you go to the beach, okay, there are a lot of um, rocks, right? And on the rocks, you will see those, um, like a coral kind of thing, okay, the coral. What they do is that they just be there, they stick at that particular rock. They are very, very loyal, but they're not beneficial to the rock. Okay, meaning they're not beneficial or they have less profitability to your company. They are highly loyal, but not profitable. Next, you have butterflies. You know butterflies? They always fly away, isn't it? The more you chase it, the more you will fly away. And when they stop, they only stop for a while. See, it is when the butterfly, they are only loyal for a very short term. Okay, and... Even though they are loyal at short term, they just stop there for a while and yes, they make profit. Okay, but it is not for long term. But what you want are the true friends. Okay, so true friends are both profitable and loyal. True friends, they will always be there with you, right? Not? And it actually benefits both. Okay, you don't take advantage of other people. But true friends help each other. That means you are profitable to the organization and organization also profitable to you because you provide a very good value. Your products are highly valuable to that particular customer. So that is when you have this particular customer relationship groups. Always want to have the true friends. Now, the different types of customer will require different engagement and relationship management strategy. Okay, so although perhaps you see strangers, you don't want them to be just strangers. You want to increase them to become your true friend. Okay, or you see your customers as butterfly. You don't want them to remain to become butterfly forever, but you want to drag them to become your true friend. And binacles also like that. You don't want them to become forever binacles to you, but increasing them to have some profit to your custom to your company by making them their. Yeah? Are your good friends okay all right next one last one the learning objective number five which is to describe the major trend and forces that are changing the market landscape in the age of relationship okay so as you know this nowadays okay digital and social media marketing involve using this Digital marketing tools such as the websites, social media, okay, number one is always social media, okay, mobile ads, apps, okay, online videos, emails, although not many people open their email and put into junk directly, okay, but still there are some emails that might capture or capture your attention, blogs or blogs, all right, that engage consumers anywhere at any time via their digital devices. Okay, this is when you are being exposed to marketing all the times. Okay, suddenly you get a notification from your phone. 25% discount on Starbucks. Uh, get it now from 10 to 12 p.m. for example. So you will quickly see your advertisement, the advertisement, the notification from your phone. Okay, even when you watch YouTube, for example, the videos on YouTube, before watching that YouTube video that you want to watch, you are forced to watch an advertisement, right? Not you can't even click skip. Okay, so there is one way of this what they call the digital marketing tools, right? So um, they are also increasing, okay, in terms of this non-profit organization marketing growth, whereby you will be able to see that many more NGOs, okay, doing marketing. And you are now um, well known because last time, perhaps five years ago, people don't really know what NGOs are available in your area. But today, because of this um, digital marketing, the non-profit organization can do marketing. Okay, the WWF, for example, you just um, go to their website, okay, then you keep on receiving a lot of newsletters, okay, even your social media news feed will always be uh, flooded with some of their courses, all right, the UNICEF, for example, the UNESCO, for example, okay, so the UN, okay, and the SDG, the Sustainable uh, Development Growth of United Nations, those are non-profit organizations that already um what is a popular okay a well-known because of this digital marketing okay and also 
rapid globalization now when you talk about globalization you're not talking about just selling your product there in front of your house or in your shop no your product your company must be in google already if you google something and it doesn't appear in google that means that company doesn't exist okay so because of the globalization okay of course you have shopee lazada especially shopee okay whereby products are not only just from malaysia but from all over the world last time ebay was very popular okay of course in the united states amazon is so popular and you can get the product not from your country by just on your laptop okay you click the button buy even though the product is in south africa for example you can get it all right so now the local sellers they need to compete with this global sellers all right and lastly when you talk about the sustainable marketing look at this particular example ben and jerry three part link the prosperity mission drive it to make fantastic ice cream okay remember your societal marketing or orientation just now we talk about the society welfare right not so that is when you talk about sustainable marketing you want it to be in the long run and forever and ever although yes i know forever doesn't exist but yes in this particular new marketing landscape we create the sustainable marketing okay by selling ice cream okay the product mission okay manage your company for sustainable financial growth okay make sure you have money you sell a good product you get sales you get money people are satisfied okay and the use of a company in innovative ways to make the world a better place so when you go here you feel happy okay and this is when ben and jerry's and its products are made of something that is better you want people to go to that particular place and feel happy find peace in that particular place okay you know when sometimes people eat ice cream because they are sad you know not only just um because they are happy but yes when you are sad you eat ice cream then suddenly you feel happy with that particular kind of environment so sustainable marketing is not just about the product not about the company but also about the experience that the customer will get when they actually exposed to those marketing all right so what is marketing okay in a nutshell okay in a nutshell is a summary of whatever that i've mentioned to you just now in this particular video um the marketing starts by understanding your market place and also what customer needs and wants okay how you do this you do research on your customer and the marketplace and then you manage this marketing information and you create your customer data and from there you already know who are your customer you understand what they need what they want and then you design a customer value driven marketing strategy okay by selecting your customer who are they your target market okay and you decide on your value proposition in terms of the differentiation that you want to sell about the product the uniqueness on the product the positioning about the product okay and then you construct an integrated marketing program remember your four p's okay these are your four p's then you are able to engage your customer build profitable relationship okay remember the true friend just now okay and make sure that your customer are delightful when they purchase your product not only just satisfied but delightful okay so here you are able to you when you do all of this okay you are able to capture value from the customer in return in what way you create customer that are satisfied they are they going to be they are going to be loyal to you so we call them the loyal customer the true friend okay and it will capture the customer lifetime value they will always want to come again and again and in the long run also it will increase the share of your market whereby you will see that customer will not want to buy from your competitors anymore but they will always want to buy from you okay so all of these okay can be done by harnessing the marketing technology okay remember emily in paris okay using the social media influencer okay using your uh, videos using your vlogs okay and then you manage your global market remember you are not only selling to local market and your customer only not just locally but they could be everywhere around the world and also ensuring the environmental and social responsibility by making sure that whatever that you do you take care of your customer and the whole human 
welfare. All right, so I hope you are able to understand all of the five learning objectives in this particular chapter. And if you have any question, please ask me in the Telegram or you can drop down your question in the comment chat below. Okay, so I hope you are able to understand everything and I'll see you in the next video for your second chapter. Thank you guys. Bye.